My name is Thomas Rokicki, and I'm going to tell you how I solved the token game problem from this year's North American Championship. With the token game, it's a competitive game. There's two tokens on the board. Each player can move a token, but they're required to move the token only in one dimension, either X or Y. They're required to decrease that dimension and the token cannot occupy the same space as the other token, nor can it jump over the other token. So two tokens, two coordinates each on an M by M board, that's four integers of up to M, so the state space of this game is O n to the fourth. At M equals 300, that's too large for us to explore directly. Which means we need to think about this game a little bit and see if we can find some simplification that allows us to analyze it. Now, there's an assumption here that you know a little bit basic game theory. Um, spray Gun Grundy values or nimbers and the equivalence of impartial games to nim states. Uh, essentially, each game state can be shown to be equivalent to a one heap nim game. The combination of games can be combined into an equivalent by taking the exclusive or of this value, of this Sprague Grundy value or number. And the Sprague Grundy value can be calculated by using a standard minimum excluded value algorithm. So the game in question has restrictions that the two tokens cannot be in the same place at the same time, nor can they jump over each other. Let's think about it. what if this game didn't have these restrictions? So in that case, a token could sit on top of another token or jump over another token. In that case, every move would be simply taking some number of values from any single dimension, and that makes it equivalent to NIM on four heaps. Unfortunately, this game is not quite that simple. The tokens interact, and this violates the independence requirement, so we can't use this sum of game evaluation. But let's play around with the game a little bit and see if we can come up with a way to reduce things. There are two final positions at which no move can be made. This is a position where one of the token is in the lower left corner and the other token is directly adjacent to it. And this position is number value zero, just like an empty heap in NIM. So it's a critical value, it's a second player win. If you think about it a little bit, any position with the two tokens adjacent is also a second player win. And the reason is because if the first player makes any move with either token, the second player can make an exactly corresponding move with the other token, bringing it back to this adjacency requirement, but at a place closer to the origin. What this means is it's also a critical position, and these positions also have a number, a number of zero. So let's think a little bit more about this. What if a token is in some dimension, it's just within one of the other token, but it's not adjacent? In that case, the player to move can simply make the tokens be adjacent by moving one of the tokens. And when they do that, they've taken it to a critical position, and therefore they have won the game. So any position in which either coordinate is within one is a win for the next player, except for the case where they're already adjacent. So this is a nice, we're, we're starting to understand how this game works. So how does this help? Well, let's, let's compare this to chess. In chess, you win when the opponent's king cannot evade capture, when there's nothing he can do to get out of check. But we never actually capture the king. It's, we just don't. So can we do something similar here? Instead of defining a win to be when a, the other player cannot move, we can define a win to be when two tokens are in the same or adjacent rows or columns, but not adjacent and we do not continue the game past this point. So in other words, we have a set of legal states of the game now that require that the two tokens not be adjacent. And, and 
we have a win situation where they are in within one in either row or either column. With this restriction, the only positions we need to evaluate are where the tokens are not in the same row or the same column, okay? Because we already know how to evaluate positions where they are. In these states, the tokens don't interact, and we can move each token arbitrarily close to the x-axis or the y-axis, ignoring the other token, okay? This lets us evaluate the game is a sum of games because now the x and y coordinates are independent. So let's think about the one-dimensional game. The one-dimensional game instead of x and y we only have x. We have two tokens on a line but they can jump over each other. Okay. In this case the critical position with the number of values zero which is a position which is lost to the player to move is when the two, two tokens are adjacent or coincident. But other than that, we use a standard um, minimum excluded value algorithm to calculate the number of values. The state space is O sub m is a squared, and we can calculate the number for each state in O sub m by simply evaluating the numbers for all lower moves. So the overrun overall run time for evaluating the one-dimensional game is O times n to the third. For m is equal to 300, it's plenty fast. Evaluating a single position in the original game is constant time. If the two tokens are adjacent, it's the next player loss. If the two tokens are in the same or adjacent rows or columns, it's the next player win. Otherwise, we take the two numbers, one from x and one from y, for our reduced one-dimensional game, and say, if these numbers are equal, if these two numbers are equal, then it's the next player loss. It's a critical position. We can exclusive or, these will only be zero if the numbers are equal. Otherwise, it's the next player win. So for any particular position in the original game, in constant time, we can tell if the player to move is going to win or if the other player is going to win. For each input position in the original problem, we are asked to count the number of winning moves. There are only O of M moves for each um, possible position, so we can evaluate each in constant time. So the overall time to evaluate the queries then is O of M N. So the total complexity is N times M squared plus N, which for M is equal to 300 and N equals whatever the input value was, uh, runs in plenty of time. And that's how you solve this problem. This problem was challenging for me. At first, I could not figure out a reduction that let me um, turn it into a sum of games, but I was fairly certain that there had to be because that's a standard trick for these types of problems. So I just had to work on it long enough to figure that out. I hope you've enjoyed this problem. Thank you.